Hi everyone, we continue to miss you, to pray for you, and to trust God and his plans for us during this time of COVID-19 and so much else that's going on around the world. And his name that we'll look at today is a great reminder when we face all types of adversity, all types of challenges, and we can have worry or fear or anxiety about facing the future. But to try to understand the meaning behind this name, I want you to think back on your life and if you had to pick the the person that was the most of something whether it be the smartest person you knew the fastest person you knew the the strongest person you knew the most talented person who you knew and imagine having to go up against them say it was the fastest person you knew and you had to race against them the strongest person you knew and you had to try to lift or carry more than them. The smartest person who you knew and you went up against them um, in a test or a spelling bee, something like that. Would you have any hope of, of competing against the best that you knew? Now imagine the person you know becoming the best of the best, the fastest of the fast, the, the smartest of the smart, the, the, the most talented of the most talented, the strongest of the strong. So imagine that you thought of your fastest friend or family member and there's no way you could beat them because they were so fast. And then they somehow got the speed of the fastest sprinter in the world of Usain Bolt or whoever you would think of or look at as the fastest human being in the world. Could you ever compete against them? And I think you probably couldn't because they were the best of the best. Now, that's the name of God that we'll look at today, which is El Gabor. El Gabor means the mighty God. It basically means the mightiest of the mighty, the strongest of the strong. There's names that are translated Gabor in the Bible. It could be translated champion. It could be translated valiant. It could be translated as a warrior. And it's translated here in the context of God, of a mighty God, who is mightier than the mightiest, who is stronger than the strongest. And what's interesting is when this name gets introduced to us is in a prophecy out of Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, to talk about the Messiah. When the Messiah comes, the Messiah will be the mightiest of the mighty. The Messiah will be El Gabor. And in the Old Testament, this, this word is used somewhat often to talk about the strongest of the strong, a warrior who is stronger than the rest, a hunter who can hunt better than the rest, the person who is, who is strong and who can fight and who's a champion. And this is the word, one of the names that God uses to describe the Messiah. Let me read out of Isaiah chapter 9. This is verse 6. It says this, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, El Gabor, Everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. So one of these names of the Messiah is this, this mighty warrior. Now it's that idea that, that they are the best. So if you look at... Um, the Old Testament, you look at some of these instances, you'll see that the, the best hunter of the whole clan, um, the strongest of the strong, two places it actually comes up, which is interesting, is in 1 Samuel 16 and 1 Samuel 17, talking about David and Goliath. So Goliath is this gigantic beast of a man who nobody would even fight because uh, he was so strong. He was so huge. He was so intimidating. He had gabor. He had strength. He was a champion. And when he was defeated, the Philistines said, our champion, our gabor, has been defeated. And he was defeated by another person that this word was used for, David, who even though was young, was mighty in God. So we could see what this word is trying to um, show us. Another way to look at it is, um, like we talked earlier, the, the fastest of the fast. I remember we were in Fiji a few years ago. And if you know uh, Fiji, one of the sports they love to play is rugby, and they're so good at it. And we would go down to the Central Park and play rugby um, with guys, and it was a blast. But there were so many people faster than us. But my son, my son is pretty fast, and, and he was faster than a lot of them. But this guy showed up, and once he showed up, everybody said, oh, forget it. You know, if he gets the ball, 
that's it. It's over because he's the fastest in his village. He's the fastest of our group of friends. There's nobody on the field who's faster than him. And he was out on the wing on the very edge so that if you could work the ball out to him, he would just zip down the line. And I remember one time um, he got the ball and my son wasn't that far. He was close enough to chase him. And they just took off and they were zipping down the sideline, him running and my son chasing. And even even with my son's speed, this guy began to pull away slowly from my son and nobody could catch this guy. That's the example of this name, El Gabor, the fastest of the fast, the strongest of the strong, a warrior, a champion. That's who this Messiah would be. And I think one of the reasons why God introduces this name of the Messiah so that we know whatever we face in life, even death, the Messiah will be our champion, the mighty God, a warrior. Now, this is probably one of the reasons why people were expecting a Messiah to come and conquer the nation, conquer Rome and bring freedom back to Israel. But they didn't realize there are things even harder to conquer than a nation, the, that being sin and that being death. And you cannot beat death. You cannot beat sin. But he did because he is a warrior, right? He is a fighter. He is a champion. He is the mighty God. He is El Gabor. So as you think about the things in life that we face, as you think about the things in life that we go through, as you think about worry or anxiety about your future or maybe about your present, keep in mind that God told us the Messiah would be the mighty God, the strongest of the strong, the champion, a warrior. He would be valiant. He wouldn't leave us. And that anything that we go through, if we are his child, if we believe in him, then we go through that with El Gabor, the strongest of the strong. We go through that with El Gabor, the champion, the warrior. We go through that with El Gabor, who is higher than everybody else. That even though this life will have ups and downs, and we, as we look to the future, we might feel uncertain at times, God gave us this name so that we would have some assurance of who we face the future with. Let me close with Jesus' words out of Matthew 28. Um, just to reassure us this type of power that Jesus gives us when he walks with us. You might be familiar with this passage, but Jesus says, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. All power in heaven and in earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you, and I will be with you to the very ends of the age. Whatever you are facing, whatever is going on, remember that Jesus, who is the Messiah, who is El Gabor, will be with us to the very ends of the age, and he has given us all authority and all power in heaven and on earth. Amen.